Hey, what's up guys? It's Online Money 24-7 and today we're going to be going through five good jobs for teenagers. So you are a teenager looking to make some extra money on the side. You're currently in high school, probably maybe in college as well, you know, just getting started in college. Uh, you need some extra money, you know, you want to go out with your friends or you want to start saving for some investing uh, that you want to get started with. So these are some ways that you can get yourself started with an income with like little to no experience at, uh, working at all. Uh, you know, this is a great way to get yourself started. So the first job example today is working fast food such as McDonald's. So out of these five examples, some of these are going to be more entrepreneurship based. Some of them are going to just be some more uh, consistent uh, workplace based, you know, working for a company. Uh, but all of them bring in income in, in, a, in a some form or fashion. So Look at it as different ways of bringing in income, not necessarily uh, five different entrepreneurship opportunities, because some of them will be uh, entrepreneurship, starting your own business opportunities, but others are also just to bring in income. This is, like I said, five jobs for teenagers. Some of them are going to be, uh, you know, company or your own business slash job that you create yourself. So pay of uh, fast food. So generally about eight, 10 an hour. That's the minimum wage. Uh, in Florida, which is where I reside, although it may be different depending on the state that you're in or the country as well. Uh, I know I have some uh, people from around the world watching this video. Uh, so the pay is dependent upon your where you're living, but generally it's going to be the minimum wage or the low pay uh, offered at a fast food place. Uh, looking at tips, there's very little to none. Uh, you know, maybe you have a little tip jar, maybe you get a few bucks at the end of the night split across your coworkers, but generally it's not exactly the greatest for tips. You get paid very little. However, the hours are very consistent. Generally, you work on a set schedule, so you may work the same hours every week, or maybe you work different hours each week, but generally it's going to be pretty consistent because people are always hungry. People need food, so it's a, con it's a consistent place that you could be bringing in income. While the, while the pay is not great per hour for the time that you're spending there, uh, it is very consistent, so you don't have to worry about, oh man, I need to find another thing to make me money you know this is this is a consistent way to bring in income for yourself uh, as a teen and startup cost is none you know you just go in for some interviews you try different places and uh you know you work at getting a job there there is no uh startup cost and when i say startup cost that's more so has to do with the entrepreneurship based incomes that are going to be later in this video um but working at a place there is no startup cost that you really need for for this type of job um, so moving into uh, retail, you generally get paid a little bit more, such as an example of Adidas. I actually used to work at an Adidas store, and I made about $9 an hour, but you could also maybe get paid a little bit more if you're a shift lead or something like that. So, I mean, generally the pay for an entry-level position just at a retail store is going to be a bit more than um, than a fast food place. Um, because the, the average order value that they bring in is a little bit higher. Companies will pay you a bit more because there's a little more training that goes into retail because you need to know the products. Whereas with fast food, it's a little bit more simple. Uh, so, but retail generally around nine plus an hour, uh, tips, none, because there isn't any like tip jars. You're not, it's not a service based business, although it is service because you're serving customers, trying to help them find their products that they're looking for. There is no tips, uh, involved. And I think that a lot of places you might get in trouble if you try and accept a tip from someone from helping you out. I'm not exactly sure how that works. It depends on the place you're working. But uh, retail, there isn't really any opportunities for tips, making extra money on top of your regular hourly wage. Uh, hours, like I said before, for uh, McDonald's or something like that, it's a set schedule. So it's pretty consistent. Um, at least when I worked retail, it wasn't the same hours every week. It was a little bit uh, few and far between based on like times of the year. Uh, you know, obviously, if you're working towards Christmas time, you're going to get a lot of hours. It's going to be a lot of people coming in looking to buy Christmas gifts. But that all depends on the time of the year based on the week. Maybe there's uh, some sort of event nearby that's going to bring in a lot of people. And that, that kind of affects, I guess, fast food a little bit too. But it affects retail a lot more uh, based on your hours that you'll be getting. So it's not as consistent uh, because people don't really need to, you know, it's people aren't eating jackets or, or shoes. You know, they're, they're wanting to get it. Uh, at least at the Adidas I worked at, it was a lot of foreigners there. So a lot of people from other countries, a lot of people from other towns, 
uh, would come in to buy things. So it wasn't like a cons- it's not always super consistent. Uh, but moving in, also no startup costs, as I said. So moving into the more entrepreneurship based ones, number three is tutoring. So tutoring is something I actually did myself, and it pays really good for the hours that you get. Uh, I made anywhere from fifteen to thirty dollars an hour. Obviously, it depends on the uh, client that you're working with. And I say client because you know you're tutoring kids, but you're really working with the parents that are paying you because they're the ones that have the money. So you know you want to definitely treat them with respect and be sure to show up on time to the tutoring, whether you're driving to a house. Or if you are tutoring at a library, tutoring at a library is a little bit closer generally. Tutoring at a house, you should definitely get paid more because you're going all the way that extra mile to them. You know, you may be spending money on gas. Well, you probably well, you're probably spending money on gas to get out there. Uh, you have it's a car, so you may have to do car repairs. So like all the costs that are associated with driving a vehicle for your work um, is there. So you're gonna get paid pretty well. I mean. Generally, it is more wealthy people that are going to be looking for personalized tutoring for their children. And, you know, if you, the way you could actually land this type of position is to maybe advertise or, or talk to some, some teachers, maybe some of your teachers in your classes, if you're in high school, maybe go by the middle school or the elementary school and talk to some of your previous teachers and ask, hey, is there anyone that needs tutoring help? Because a lot of teachers don't have the extra time to tutor on the side some of their students, um, which also depends if it's a public school that's not really allowed. But if it's, a, if it's like a private school that is generally allowed for teachers to tutor their students but a lot of times they don't have the time so if you're a high schooler you could go by an elementary or middle school talk to some of your past teachers that you may have had when you were younger and see if there some of their students are struggling or need help and then you know you could land a tutoring position that way you meet some of the parents one day after school when they're picking them up or something like that there's a lot of opportunities there to network and meet um whether it be parents or um you know, previous teachers that may know a student that could use your help. If you were, if you got good grades in their class, they'll definitely recommend you for tutoring. So that could be an option for you. The hardest part is, is landing the people. But once you build up kind of a reputation, parents will generally talk to another, other parents and then be like, oh yeah, my son's uh, getting tutored by this, this guy or this girl. I definitely recommend them. And then you'll kind of build up a little bit of a reputation for yourself as a tutor, you know, if you're helping increase their test scores, so you can get paid pretty hefty for this. I mean, tutoring was definitely the, one of the more, more lucrative businesses that I had in high school because, I mean, I, I only worked maybe a couple hours a week and got paid, you know, $30 an hour cash. So no, no, no taxes taken out of that is all just cash. And I would usually just deposit my bank account still, but I mean, that was, you know, it's very open. You generally you ha- you're gonna have to obviously adjust to the hours that they need you to tutor their their children, but they are very open to to what your schedule is too. The startup costs very little. You probably need some pens, pencils, but that's super cheap. Uh, that's basically almost nothing that you're gonna really need to start up this uh, tutoring business. All you need is some time to to talk to different people to try and get your clients. Uh, tips. I say none. But that's generally because if they're paying you more, that's kind of like a tip, I guess, because generally I was, I mean, my base charging rate was like $15 an hour. So some, you know, people that had more money would be, would literally just offer, I'm going to pay you $30 an hour. And I was like, okay, cool. So, or $40 an hour, even in one special case, but that was very rare. I mean, the $40 an hour, that was crazy. And that was a very wealthy family that I drove all the way out to their house for, but generally 15 to 30 dollars an hour is a going rate and that's still better than minimum wage at other places and it's a you know you're just sitting down talking to a kid and helping them with their homework so i would say it's a pretty solid uh business that you could start you just have to work on getting clients uh but i definitely recommend that moving along to another one entertainment business so i actually was a dj as well for a little bit and uh you know i got paid around 20 to 30 an hour uh, tips are high generally because you know you're you're bringing all your equipment to a location setting it all up and if you're give if you're a good dj you're a good entertainer and you're playing music that people are enjoying uh generally what i would do is just find the billboard hot 100 and play that because people like to hear the same kind of songs so that would work you know rotate through what's most popular at the time uh, the only thing is, is that it, the hours are kind of open, which is nice, you know, but it's very event based 
and I went many like I went like a couple months without having any work and so I did this in combination with tutoring and just like DJing was it's fun and doing I mean it doesn't even have to be specifically DJing it could just be entertainment um for a party but based on something you know how to do but DJing is generally the most common uh, form of entertainment that people will pay for for a birthday party or local event and it's it's okay but it's a lot of work and the startup cost is also kind of moderate because you have to buy all the equipment but at the end of the day if you have fun doing it it's cool and you're getting paid so it's it's not exactly a bad setup it, it for me it just was a lot of work for what you get out of it you know you get paid a decent amount but it's you know, it's not very consistent that's the probably the biggest problem with with any kind of uh, bi a business like this is that it's it's inconsistent uh, unless you're really pushing out your marketing a lot. But it's just that people don't throw birthday parties and events 24-7. So in, if you maybe if you worked for an entertainment company with weddings, you know, that could work. Um, but that's that's a bit higher than, uh, you know, they're not going to generally hire a teenager for a wedding. Uh, it's usually a more professional person. And I say pro when I say professional, I say more experienced person. Just because it doesn't matter for birthday parties or local events. If they know you, you know, if you're a friend of a friend, they'll hire you as a teen. It doesn't even matter. But if you're, you know, trying to – weddings is a little bit tougher to break into. That's where a bit more money is, and it's a little more consistent. Uh, if you maybe find a company that, that could hire you out for those events as like a freelance uh, DJ, that could work well. But that's that's a whole different even side of things. I, I would I would recommend it if you enjoy doing this, but it's definitely not something super easy to get into because it takes a lot of time to learn the software, how to actually do it. You got to network a bit to get yourself get your name out there. But if it's fun, it could work well for you. So moving into the last one, which I would say is probably one of the best ones, uh, the positions is a server slash delivery for a restaurant. So it is hard work. It's a lot of hard work, but the pay the pay is anywhere from 508 to 25 an hour, roughly. And I say that when tips are high, you could be making a lot more per hour, but it's very it ranges widely based on who you're serving, who you're delivering to, based on what they're going to give you as a tip. As you can see the picture on the top, I have a server. On the below, I have a uh, bike driver for Jimmy John's. Uh, and so the hours is usually a work set schedule. Uh, so, you know, you're going to be working a set amount of time, but you also get the, as I said, the tips. So it's going to be consistent and you get those tips when you're working, but it is a range. It's not always the, the pay is, is rain. It ranges. You're, you're generally going to get at least a certain amount that you can expect. Sometimes you get a lot more, sometimes you get a little less. So it kind of ranges on average. You probably do maybe $20 an hour, depending on the day you might get maybe 10 an hour it, it really it ranges a lot based on tips like i said startup cost is none uh, if you know if you're doing a bike driver you obviously got to have a bike or if you're a car delivery driver maybe for a pizza place you have to have a car uh to drive the pizza as a server serving you know you maybe want a little bit of experience working in the restaurant business before getting hired as a server uh, but you know, if you're if you're an outgoing person, you can get hired if you know someone and start working as a server as well. So that that one's probably one of the better ones I would say uh, to get uh, as an opportunity as a teenager. Definitely recommend it. Uh, so these are five different uh, ways that you can make money as a teen. Uh, so that pretty much wraps up this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and if you have any questions, leave that down in the comment section below, but I will see you in the next one. Peace out.